What up, gang? This Ken Zarek, Ken Zilling, Ezekiel Milling, and the villain for the Trilligan, and we are back on Tsukihime. Last episode, we squared up with the serpent dude, right? And we whooped his ass. And he ran away, but Arakai caught his ass lacking and fucked him up. It's a little confusing what really is going on here with him. I don't know if I just forgot a lot of details, wasn't really paying enough attention, or if I'm just dumb. But it is slightly confusing for me right now. 10th day, October 30th, Saturday. Red Residue 2. Red Residue. So what's going to happen in Red Residue 2? I don't remember what happened in the first one. Oh, shit! I wake up with a start and kick off my sheet sitting up in bed. What? I wipe the sweat rolling down my face. Maybe I saw a bad dream. I'm drenched in sweat. I don't remember seeing a nightmare. Was it because of that book I read? I think I saw something a little bad, but I don't remember what it was. Well, a famous doctor did say it is the nature of dreams to fade away. So I shouldn't try too so hard to remember it. Oh yeah, we had a, I don't know if it was a dream, but we started reading a book and it was li quite literally just a serpent. Like, it, it was quite obviously the serpent. Knock, knock. A polite knock sounds. Good morning, Shiki. Mm, morning. I return her greeting and stand up. He soon places the uniform in her hand onto the desk and shuffles quietly back towards the door. Please head to the dining room once you are finished changing. Yeah. Thanks as always. After giving an affirmative answer, he soon exits the room. Huh? After seeing her face, I completely forgot what it was I was thinking about. Jeez. Was I always this forgetful? Tilting my head in curiosity over myself, I change into the uniform. The knife is on my desk. The knife from my adopted father that I've always been carrying in my pocket these past few days. I probably won't have to use that anymore. That's right. They're gone. Arukai, Shio, the horde of beasts called Nizdlizdla, and the vampire called Roa. All of them are no longer here. Maybe what I forgot was something about that. There isn't anything waiting for me at school. Senpai's gone, so it probably won't be fun anymore. But that was how I lived my days up until now. I only lost something that I gained recently. Everything I had before still remains. If I think about it that way, I can manage without Senpai. I can never forget her, but I can manage. Fooling myself with that, I open the door. Then let's go to school like I've always been doing. I hate when it does that because I think like so I think something's cutting him off, but it's just changing scenes and I'm like, oh my goodness, it throws me off. I'm like, what the hell? It's 7:50. The gate at the front of the school is crowded with students. Since it's Saturday, there are bright faces everywhere. I wade through the sea of sunny faces as the clouds as a cloud of gloom. No matter what I tell myself, the fact that Senpai is gone weighs heavily on my... Huh? I can't believe my eyes for a moment, but there's no doubt. Sheila's is walking towards the school. S senpai I shout her name without even thinking as she turns to towards me. Oh, Tono. Good morning. She gives me a bow. Good morning. Didn't you go back? No. I would never go back leaving you here. She speaks with a brilliant smile. Never go back leaving me here. Even though there are students all around me, I feel myself blush furiously. Uh, that is, yes, what is it? Can I take those words for what they sound like? Yes, I leave it up to your imagination, Tano. Hold on, hold on, hold on. She nods and gives a radiant smile. I can't breathe. Not because of the pain tension I have felt up until now, but because of the burning happiness that now wells up inside of me. If no one was around, I'd shout, All right! at the top of my lungs. Senpai! I grab her hand. S so you mean you won't go anywhere, right? Y you'll stay here at school forever, right? Um, if I stay at school forever, I'll become an old lady. I am a third year student, so I have four months left until graduation. But you'll stay here, right? You won't leave like you said yesterday, right? Yes. I'll stay to the end now. All right. 
I let go of her and managed to stop myself. I want to run around the ground for many laps. As if I won the lottery. I'm feeling really high. No, this feels far, far greater than that. I feel like laughing out loud. I can't even bear to just stand here and do nothing. Tell her no, you should hurry and you'll be late. Oh, that's right. Later, senpai. See you at the break. Waving a hand to senpai, I go towards the school building. Smiling to myself, I run as fast as I can to class. First period is over. I have 10 minutes until the next class. All right. The instant I raise myself to go look for senpai's class, damn. <laughs> she said, Pew! huh? Huh? Where are you going, Tono? Senpai comes here ahead of me. Uh, nowhere. I was going to see you. I always wait for you, so I thought I'd go see you this time. I see. That makes me very happy, but you don't know my class, right? It's third year class B. Please remember it. Oh, really? So you really do take classes? Well done. Well done. I see you do more than just drink tea in the tea ceremony room. Yes, I do manage to follow classes. Hey, wait a minute, Tono. You think I really like that? Uh, can't really deny that. Sorry, but Senpai, you said there were no members of the tea ceremony club, but I thought it might have never existed in the first place. Senpai stands there and grows quiet. Huh? Don't tell me there really wasn't. It's just an unused Japanese style room. Huh? It seems like I do not understand what you're talking about. She'll turn to gaze out the window and stares blankly. No, that's fine. No matter what you've done, you're not a bad person. So I don't think you'll cause anyone trouble, but can your power of suggestion do such a thing? I already told you I don't know what you mean, so I can't answer that. Still in my seat, I stare up at Shield. The silence lasts for about a minute. You're pretty persistent, Tono. Not really, I was just thinking about how blue your eyes were. Hold on! Hold on, that boy Tono with the game! He's spitting his shit like Deborah, my nigga! Hold on! Shill gives a sigh as if admitting defeat. I said it already, but the power of suggestion isn't that convenient. Suggestion isn't so much able to change your perceptions of things as it is more like making you look away. So even if I told you that you really like curry when you hate it, it would not work. Really. So you can't make someone do what they don't want to. Yes. Well, there's still many ways to make you eat curry, Tono. For example, I wouldn't tell I wouldn't tell you that you really like curry. Instead, I could tell you that you would die if you didn't eat curry. I get it. I would eat it even if I hate it. I see. Then you can do anything with that. No, it is really difficult to set the stage for such a thing as resistance as the resistance would be great. There are many people that are difficult to forcibly use suggestion against. So all I can do is suggest something like, do not doubt what I say. Yeah, Arakai said something like that too. I see. By the way, Senpai. Yes. What is it? Yeah. Senpai, you really love curry, don't you? She'll just smiles and does not answer. Her slight expression makes it impossible for me to see if she's if she's denying it or affirming it. Well, it is about time. I'll see you again after classes are over, but is your body okay, Tono? Your arms are working fine? Yeah, it doesn't hurt anymore. I can come to school thanks to you. I bring my hands together and give her a bow of thanks. I see, then how was your headache? It seemed like it really hurt yesterday. My head is okay too. Besides, if I have my glasses on, it's no problem. I see. Hearing that makes me feel much better. Shield heads towards the hallway. She suddenly stops as if she forgot something and turns around. I forgot to ask. Tono, are you feeling well? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks to you, all my troubles have disappeared. That's good. If anything strange happens, then please do not hesitate to tell me. Here's my phone number. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, we got the number. Hold on, we got the digits. Hold on, we got the cellular. Huh? She hands me a slip of paper with her phone number on it and quickly leaves the classroom. Ah, uh, she was just nervous. 
she came she wanted to give us her phone number already but she needed to get she needed a she needed an excuse oh that's cute she has me a slip of paper with a phone number on it and leaves the classroom her phone number i stared down at the paper in surprise i'm sure she told me this because she's really worried about last night but this is lucky but is it good that things are going this smoothly it's pitiful if I say so myself. Maybe it's because I'm a small town person by nature, but I can't honestly be happy about my good fortune like this. I don't blame you, shit is going too smooth. After homeroom is over, the classroom suddenly erupts into its usual chaos. It's not quite noon yet. It's always like this after Saturday class. The students rushing back home are eating in the classroom before they go to their club activities, mix together and create chaos. Standing up from my seat, I prepare my things while waiting for senpai and then... I'm not sure when this fucker even came to school, but Arihiko appears with a suspicious smile on his face. <clears throat> Let's go play, Tarno. Without anything else, he tells me what he wants to do. <laughs> you seem pretty direct today. Did something bad happen to you? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to hang out with my good friend for no reason. It's all too suspicious. No way. I bet you were laid off by someone or something like that. I'm going home with Senpai today, so I don't have time to spare for you, fuck nigga. Senpai? You mean Shiel? His eyebrows lift in surprise. Yes, but Arihiko, you remember Senpai? What do you mean? She's who I'm after, how could I forget her? Arihiko makes his proclamation as if it was the most natural thing in the world. I see. Since Shiel came back to school, everything is back the way it was. Oh, it's Senpai! Arihiko points happily to the door. Thanks for waiting. Good afternoon, Inui. Shiel gives a succinct bow. Shall we go back now? Or maybe we go to the tea ceremony room? Let's do that. If we leave now, we'll have to part at the gate. I want to talk to you some more, so while we have tea, we can... Someone punches me unexpectedly from behind. Hey! It's you, Arihiko. Yeah, it's me. I'm not one to open my mouth about these things very often, but since that was too much back then, I'll tell you. Arihiko looks at me and Senpai with sad eyes. Sheil and I look at each other. Uh, you two. It is a Saturday, so why don't you use it like that? There are far more fun places to go than a tea ceremony room. With a greatly exaggerated movement, he points out the window. Um, where? Outside the window. Well, I think he's talking about outside. I answer Seal's question. And then Arihiko whacks me again. Tano, are you really trying to make a fool of Senpai? Look, it's Saturday. It's still before noon. And we're students. So why can't you come up with an idea such as going into town with all these conditions? Fuck. Idiot. I thought about that already. I did, but... I still a glance at Shield. I get the feeling that rather than roaming rowd rowdily through around the city, she'll feel more at ease just sitting quietly in a park or something, so I can't ask her that. If I did ask her to go hang out in town, I think she would probably say no. I see. Then shall the three of us have fun? Senpai. Isn't it alright? I don't have to worry about anything anymore, and I think it'll be fun to go with the three of us. Ah, uh, yeah, if you want to, then I'd be happy. Yes. Inu, you're okay with this too, right? He simply nods up and down. I bet he didn't expect things to turn out this way. I'm pretty sure he was being a wingman, bro. Like, he, he, he realized that we was low-key, like hanging out with each other and he was like bro ain't no way you gonna take this girl to a tea ceremony room when you could go out and have a date out in the outside world come on bro i think he was trying to wing man for us bro he a real one then it's exciting um what shall we do for lunch shall we eat in our houses or the three of us together we always eat at school so let's put the money for lunch to play what the fuck so let's put the money for lunch to play me and Arihiko are pretty poor, right? Uh, I could maybe borrow some money from my sister. 
Huh? Oh shit, hold on. Uh, we always eat at school, so let's put the money for lunch to play. Me and Arihiko are pretty poor, right? Uh, I could all I could maybe borrow some money from my sister. It seems Arihiko really wants to go out and eat with Shiu. Nigga, you are not poor! Bro, you got a mansion! If you don't go ask Akiha for a smooth 30, bro, for a crisp 30, bro, how about Senpai? Is this some place you want to eat? No, I don't usually eat in front of others. I see. You eat more than normal, so I bet it'll be expensive, fat fuck. <laughs> that, that is not it. What are you saying, Tono? I just recalled the data I collected during our lunches in the tea ceremony room until now and just gave my personal opinion. I agree with the Nui. Let's all, let us all go out to eat. There is a place by the movie theater called An Ananerbe, Ananerbe, that I heard has great strawberry pie. Oh, you know your place is senpai. The owner of that cafe is a master of Italian cooking. Why does Arahiko know so many rumors and useless information? Why is my camera so low? I need y'all to see as much of my luscious body as possible. Then let's meet in front of the movie theater in half an hour. Is that all right, Tana? Uh, you know it takes half an hour to get to my house, Senpai. Senpai already starts to disappear down the hallway. Yeah, be late, Tono. If you want to, I wouldn't care if you didn't come to tomorrow. Arahiko stands up and dashes out of the classroom. This all worked out rather strangely. Oh well, I still get to hang out with Shio. Bag in hand, I also rush back to my place. And then Arukai grabs me by the throat and fucking murders me. Oh, Shiki, you're back early today, aren't you? Yeah, I'm back, Ohaku. I'm in a hurry, so see you later. Shiki, you have returned. I'll be leaving right away, so don't worry about lunch. All right, 15 minutes. I set a new record for my school to back here. Throw my bag on my desk, I change out of my uniform. After that, I fly out of my room again. From the mansion to the main street is farther than the mansion to the school. To be honest, it's not a distance I can make in 15 minutes. She knew I lived uphill, but she still made that impossible deadline. Damn, maybe she, damn, maybe she might be a bit mean. I'll grumble as I shoot down the stairs. Oh shit, throb. Throb. Suddenly without warning. Throb. Everything turns red. Shiki! I can hear Hisui's voice. I hear fast footsteps. Hisui seems to be in, more, in a hurry more than usual. Shiki, are you hurt? I can hear her voice, but I can't see her. Throb. I just have this headache. Calm down, Hisui. Falling down the stairs just means a few bruises here and there, so there's no need to call a doctor. But his body is very hot. He may have fallen down the stairs due to a fever, so please get his bed ready. I understand. About Akiha. That's true. If this doesn't turn out to be a big deal, we don't have to tell her. There is some medicine in my room, if you please. Yisui disappears with quick footsteps. I... Shik, are you conscious? Kohaku. Yes, Shiki. You took quite a tumble down the stairs. Fortunately, you do not have any serious bruises, but you seem to have a fever. You seem like you were going somewhere, but please, just rest for today. Kohaku puts her hand on my shoulder and manages to make me stand up. No, nah, I'm fine. I don't need to rest. I ran all the way here, so I was just out of breath. That won't do. How can you say that with such a pale face looking like you'll throw up? I was told by your physician to monitor your health closely. I can't let you take such risks. But I made a promise. If you want to tell them you can't make it, I can go tell them. If you keep pushing yourself, I'll have to take out my syringes and give you shots, nigga. As if she wants to keep me here, she stands in front of me. Throb. I have a headache. Fuck you mean Kohaku is in the way? Nigga, no. Kohaku is not in the way. Do what she says. You're gonna fucking kill her! You're gonna kill her! Certainly. If I went, if I went to see Shia with this headache, I'd just be a bother. That's right, I haven't even had a chance to rest from last night. Guess I pushed myself a little. 
Then please rest. Shake it. Can you walk by yourself? Ah, uh, no. It seems impossible right now. That's right. Oh, he's Sui. Carry Shiki to his room. Uh, but... Hisui, Shiki is sick. Are you just going to abandon him like that? Uh, I will allow it for today, so take him to his room. Yes, sorry for saying such selfish words. As long as you understand, it's fine. Did you find the medicine? Um, you had too many medicines. I is this the fever medicine? Let's use for something else. Shiki is still conscious, so we don't need to use medicine that would stabilize him. It seems his fever is from being tired, so I'll make some medicine. Hisui, please, take care of the rest. Gohaku swiftly disappears towards the West Hall where her room is. Shiki, I will take you to your room. With an excuse me, she lends me her shoulder. Thanks to Hisui's help, I managed to get up the stairs. On the way, even more than my terribly throbbing headache, Hisui's incredibly embarrassed face burns into my memory. In the end, I lied down in bed, drank the medicine Kohaku made, and entrust her to pass my pass all my messages to Shield, who's waiting at the movie theater. Gah! My headache doesn't stop. As if in exchange, my body did seem to cool down. Thanks to the goodwill of Makihisa, they received training from pharmacy. Until Makihisa passed away, she was also consulted in maintaining his health. Isui's face returns to his usual lack of expression and tells me things I didn't even ask about. <laughs> ah, fuck! Sharp pain stabs through my head. Even though I'm in this much pain, she seems to be tending me without even batting an eyelash. That's only to be expected. I'm the one in pain, not her. If she acted like she was in pain or had a clouded expression, it would be troublesome. Troublesome, nigga. Gah! Shiki, are you still in pain? Sorry, Hisui. Yes, what is it? You're an eyesore, so please leave. I can't sleep with you here. I understand, then please excuse me. If you need anything, please call for me. Hisui leaves the room. With that, I actually do relax. Damn, an eyesore is crazy! My headache also weakens, so maybe I can sleep now. Maybe it's maybe it's those impulses coming back, those inversion impulses. I'm sorry. Maybe maybe it's those impulses coming back, right? And serpent isn't actually gone, so he's still having the impulses, right? And they're triggering because there are people nearby him, so it's like he won't calm down unless the people he's able to murder are, you know, not with not in his vicinity, you know. Knock, knock. The door opens. Excuse me, Nissan. Nis what the fuck? Excuse me, are you awake? Yeah, I'm up. You need something, Nakia? No, I heard you were arrested because of your anemia, so I came to see how you were doing. She looks over at me as I lie in bed, a soft gaze that tells me she's worried. To be honest, it's annoying as hell. I'm fine. It's not that bad, that's why I'm resting here by myself. Go back to your room, Akiha. What are you saying? It's already dinner time, you know? I came here to tell you that. Dinner? Oh, is it that time already? But I'm not very hungry and I don't feel like eating anything. I don't have an appetite, so I'll skip dinner. I'm fine, so go away. I don't feel good. I understand. Please, get your rest. But if you are awake, please, turn the lights on in your room. Your eyes will go bad in the dark. I'm fine. I can relax this way. Even though her eyes tells me she wants to say more, she leaves the room. I'm so irritated. Hisui's reactions, Akiha's worried eyes, they all treat me like I'm something fragile. Isn't this like always? It's not like I'm coughing up blood or sucking up blood, so why can't they just leave me alone? Grit. In the darkness, I hear myself grinding my teeth. My nerves are fraying, I know that. If I stay awake like this, I'll become completely depressed. I'm not tired, but I have to sleep. 
Huh? Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. What? I go out to the main street. The date has changed about two minutes ago. The dead of night on Sunday. No one is walking the streets. Did I mistake the time? If I started walking around an hour earlier, I wouldn't have to work so hard. Dragging, walking. What makes this dragging sound isn't my walking, but something else. The time was right. If I started walking an hour earlier, I never would have been able to walk like this. Dragging. With one hand gripping a woman's hair, I continue to walk. Long hair. Because she looked like Akiha, I chose this woman. Not her face, but I liked her hair. I let go of her hair. Unconscious, she collapses on the ground. I did not kill her. I didn't eat dinner, so I want to make it as appetizing as possible. I've heard someone that the blood of the dead is cold and tastes terrible. I have no complaints about her unblemished neck. Gripping my knife in one hand, I draw my mouth closer. After seeing that dream, I wake up. Okay, you know what? Thank God, because I thought bro actually tweaked out. I wake up from my sleep and my mind starts to clear. My throat is horribly parched and my entire body feels excited. What, what kind of dream was I watching? Can't believe it. Leaving at night, knocking a woman I don't know unconscious and dragging her to an alley? That's just plain wrong. Cause it was a dream, it's okay, but I'd have to be crazy to do that in reality. My panting fills the room. I have to catch my breath. Rubbing my eyes, I take a deep breath. After that, I don't think I can go back to sleep. Turning on the light, I decide to read a book until morning. My eyes gradually get used to the dark. What? I gasp. This isn't my room. A back alley, knife in hand. In front of me lies an unconscious woman I don't know. Uh, what, what am I doing? Isn't this a dream? Isn't this what I dreamt before? It has to be a dream. Cause I've never even wanted to do such a thing before. Attacking some woman I don't know, running my knife along the lines all over this supple body, wanting to see the red, red blood from the chopped pieces. No way, no way. Yeah, there's no way I want to do it. But for some reason, I'm thinking that I have to do it. Take her apart. Take her apart. Take her apart. Take her apart. If I do that, I can be released. It becomes something unable to be bound by anyone. Come to think of it, there was someone that said something like that before. You're the same. You, like me, will end up a killer, Tano Shiki. Up! Just admit it, killer. Your inversion impulse is nothing more than what you wish for. Shut up! But what is this? Just what is this? Why am I doing this? And even after realizing this, why am I still trying to press my knife against her neck? If this isn't a dream and if this is reality, doesn't that mean I'm crazy like I thought earlier? Huh. My heart eyelids flutter. She starts to open her eyes. Before that, I have to chop her apart or I... Ah... My knife moves, but that's... Who are you? I can hear her voice. She suddenly realizes the knife next to her throat. Ah! Ah! Her scream vanishes into my yelling. Yelling. Like a broken siren, I, kept, I keep yelling as I run. I breathe rapidly. My fingers shake. My mind has gone blank but I managed to pull my knife back and run before I slice it. But if she had screamed before me, I would've... <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit! Scary. That's scary. Scarier than any of the things that have happened until now. Half laughing, half panting, I run. It's following me. It drapes over my back. No matter how much I run, I can't escape from my own fear. I fly into my room and try to lock the door. I clamor about, but I can't get it done. My fingertips, my fingertips shake crazily. It's just sliding a simple metal piece, but I can't do it. I'm scared. If I don't lock the door quickly, it'll come in. Some unknown thing will come in. 
I have to lock the door. I can't let it come in this room. I can't let it leave this room. But why? I don't know. I don't know, but I continue to try and lock the door wildly. I try all night to lock the door. But no matter how long I try, I can't even lock the door. That's when it hits me. I've been crazy all along. Shit! Okay! 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 He's one crazy motherfucker. Okay, but we remember though, remember though, the serpent Roa, he did say that the reason we had those impulses was because that he was inside of us, right? Because he was there in our body. That was the reason we had the impulses. He said that. So I'm theorizing that even though we took over our body, like we took our body back and our will overpowered his, that doesn't mean that his will left us. So because even though Arukai killed him, he's still inside of us, you know? He still was able to transfer his soul inside of ours. So now we're, we're, having, we're just back to having the, the impulses because now his full soul is within us, right? So we're struggling with him even more. Like it's, an, it's even more of a fight. So it's not that we're crazy. We're just having these impulses again because before Arukai killed him, he transferred his soul into, back into us. So we're having those impulses again. So damn, we might have to kill ourselves. Like that, that might be the only way to get rid of him, right? To, if, we, if we kill ourselves, we might have to kill, commit suicide, you know? That's the end of the episode. Peace out. I love y'all tap into the next one. Shit is fucking crazy. Holy fuck. We're almost at the end. I heard it was um 12 days for each route. This is the 11th day. Oh my goodness. Ugh.